you hear me? We got you loud and clear. We got a good group of local media for you today, Coach. So we'll, How you guys doing? Good. We'll go ahead and open up for questions for Coach Marion. Brennan, how long after um, when Chris Beatty took the job with the Chargers, how quickly did you kind of look at the pit job? Uh, pretty quick. I got word uh, that he was leaving, and a lot of people from Pittsburgh reached out to me and, you know, just really uh, was excited about even the opportunity to, to even interview for the job, just trying to, you know, find a way to get a connection to Coach Narduzzi and, and, and get, get in the role. Had you had a connection with Coach Narduzzi before this, Brennan? No, no, not at all. What was your first impression? I, I really love Coach. We went to a went to an Italian restaurant, so you know we went to DeFazio's over there, and uh, it was it was great. Just to you know, he's like a he's a, he's a normal guy. He's a football guy. He's from Ohio, Youngstown. I have family that lives in Youngstown, so it, it was it was good, really good. Brennan, is a bit surreal to kind of be back in this capacity after leaving Pittsburgh so many years ago? Uh, yeah, you know, this was always like the one of the destination stops where you want to be, um, you know, obviously back home. And to come back, you know, how I left, you know, going off to junior college and kind of the story that's kind of shaped from that to, to coming back here. I mean, I've always came back and recruited and helped kids, had community events and stuff. But uh, to come back in this and this role, like, you know, it's, it's very surreal to come back here as a, as a coach. And looking back at your career, um, you, you, it seems to me you're a guy that really loves the game. I mean, you, su you suffered and endured all those knee injuries. Then you had a situation in junior college where the coach couldn't find you housing. How difficult was it to keep playing football uh, amidst all that? Uh, like, I, like I teach all the players that I come in contact with, my mom kind of she kind of showed me this growing up, but it's like, I don't operate on how I feel. You know, if you, if you love someone, love something, you're committed to it. I've been committed to football since I was five years old and I don't operate on how, you know, what's going on in the midst of my circumstances. I just continue to keep pushing and going forward. So for me, it's just like something happens. It's like, okay, boom, you pray about it. You keep moving forward. You've already had a lot of stops in your career. How much do you kind of embrace the climb you've been on in just a relatively short amount of time? It's really, you know, I, I really just keep the players first and they've just continued to push me up. I mean, I've just always been all about the players and promoting them and, and being, being, you know, in great relationship with them, lifelong relationship. And that's really how it just keeps keeps going you know it's really what your players do that's that shows what type of coach you are and that's what's kind of helped me Brennan, how do you go about about go ahead John. i don't know it's all good jeff go ahead how do you go about evaluating your receiver core and uh, what are the best things they can do to make a good first impression on you uh, right now, the biggest thing that we're doing is creating a relationship. I think anytime you want to drive results, it's it's relationship driven on how you drive somebody else. I mean, obviously, I didn't recruit these guys out of high school um, as far as, you know, so we don't have that rapport. So right now we're just building a trust, trust factor. Um, obviously, with film and all those things, I'm able to go back, look at their high school tape, look at what they did well in the season, you know, what's their strengths and weaknesses from a film standpoint. But the only way that I'm going to get them better is by creating that relationship with them. Um, and that's what we're doing now. Brendan, how integral do you think those go-go concepts uh, were in kind of landing the job in the first place? And um, do you get the sense that some of those might be implemented here at Pitt? I, I think any time you, you do something different, you know, not many, not many times in football can you do a lot of things differently. The game's been going on for 150 years. So um, for me, you know, those things really, really helped bring me to the forefront of college football when I was at small schools and able to do some of those things. It, it helped me out. My players did really well executing those game plans that we had. Um, and then here, you know, with Coach Whip, you know, we actually, you know, we have, we share a lot of the same thought process on things. And, you know, uh, Coach, uh, Coach Borbs, offensive line guy, Coach Powell, Coach Salem, we have prior people that we've known throughout the coaching ranks. So it helps us you know, I come in and my my input is valued. You know, it's not like uh, you can't say anything when I come in the room. It's actually like, Brennan, what would you do here? So 
um, I think that we'll definitely have some things that will go in and, and help us, you know, put more points on the board. Brennan, can you define the uh, go-go offense for us, what exactly it does and, and how you came about devising it? Uh, really what it does is, um, you know, when I was out in California, I was watching De La Salle and they just obviously win all the time. They run the triple option. It was the hardest thing to stop the veer option. And I didn't want to run veer or anything like that. I wanted to run the normal, you know, run plays and stuff. And so we basically every normal run play that you could think of in football, when you put the two back side by side, you run, you can run the triple option off of that. So you can do the triple option with the back or the receiver. So every single time you have multiple options for the quarterback, then you can turn it into RPOs, second and third level reads down the field. Um, and it really just gives it the ability to play without an offensive line. You know, when I was a when I was first starting out as a high school head coach, taking over really bad football teams, the thing that's always, you know, if you're not uh, sound in the trenches, you know, you're going to really struggle in football. And, you know, for me, I'm too competitive to just say, OK, we're not good enough. We're going to lose, you know, and I just want to find something that I could give us an opportunity to win games and put points on the board. And that's that's what it did. You know, when you look at where we were at with Howard, William and Mary in high school, um, even at Hawaii, we used some of the stuff last year and it really gives you an opportunity to make a big play, even though you're lacking something up front. So Brendan, when you look at the, when you look on tape, you, you know, I know you said you're forging relationships. When you look on tape, you know, Pitts had an all, a freshman all ACC guy like Jordan Addison. They got veteran guys, you know, who've been around for a few years. What are things that some of jump out, jump off the screen about you, about the things like that you like, don't like, and where you, where you see this group going? I think we, I think we have what, when you talk about our receivers right now, we have great individual play. I think they play, you know, they all have came up with some big plays and, and, and different spots. I think the biggest thing that we have to work on is being more focused as being a, a united group, uh, playing harder, you know, playing to the end of the whistle, things of that nature. I think that we have great individual talent. I think we just have to put it all together, you know, as, as a whole on offense. Brennan, you have uh, local ties and you've, you've been all over the place. So uh, like on the recruiting trail, I mean, do you have any specific areas you, you're planning to hit or just kind of looking for the best talent anywhere? Yeah, the, the, the great thing, you know, I used to think it was a curse when I was a kid when you move around so much and, you know, all that type of stuff. But the good thing about when you do that is you have relationships everywhere. And I kind of can communicate with kids because I understand the language of where they're at, you know, the different slang terms and stuff that they use and the communities that they're from, because I've lived in there or I've had a teammate from there, or work with somebody from there, you know, so I've lived in all the hotbeds of recruiting. I mean, so I've lived in California, I've lived in Florida, I lived in uh, Pennsylvania, you know, Georgia, a lot of different places, you know, and have family places. So, and coach in different places. So that, that really helps me in recruiting. I think that's my edge, you know, for recruiting. I can get around people, understand them and, and, and ultimately get them. I mean, it's about get ability. You have to be able to get the player. Coach, you've seemed to hit the ground uh, you, since you've been home. What's the best thing about being back in Pennsylvania for you so far? The food. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, Pittsburgh to me is a very special place. Um, obviously, everything that I've taken out in the world since I've since I left Western PA, um, you know, the toughness is what is what what drives us here. You know, we we come from a you know a lot of different tough circumstances and backgrounds, and we're able to go out into the world. Pretty much all the people that I meet from Pittsburgh around the world, all the way out to Hawaii are pretty successful and they all equate it to their, their upbringing in Pittsburgh. So um, that's one of the things that it, it really, really helps you with. Brennan, building off of your response here, you talked about the food in Pittsburgh. I saw you post that you said you've been to Minio's three times since you've been back. Is Minio's, this is very important, is Minio's the best pizza in Pittsburgh? We gotta know, man. Yeah, I mean, to me, I, I mean, that's because like my mom, you know, she she does it. When I was a kid growing up, we wouldn't go anywhere else but Minio. So I really don't even know what else is going on. If we ate pizza, it was Minio. So I don't, you know, people's telling me there's other better pizza. I don't, I don't know. I eat Minio. So that's, that's kind of my deal. I'm a creature of habit. So. Brennan, um, Casey Kavanaugh tells me that if not for your knee injuries, he believes you would have played on Sundays. Do you believe that? I mean, if you if you look back at any coach that I've had from the NFL, uh, you know they'll they'll all tell you the same thing. I was in the starting lineup. I was, 
very intelligent player. I mean, I was, I was, I was right where I needed to be. And I was probably five, six months off ACL surgery and I worked my way into the starting lineup. So kind of just leave it as it is, you know, I don't, I don't know, I guess. Brennan has dealing with that made you a better coach. Do you think? Uh, yeah, getting hurt taught me patience. You know, I, I don't, I didn't, I didn't have much patience. You know, I, I really didn't think about the the process of things, you know, um, really when I was a football player, I, I've worked to like the pre the reason why I got hurt honestly is because I was like a gym rat nonstop seven days a week, two and three, four, five workouts a day, certain days, you know, played basketball after I did football. So I really just never stopped working out. And eventually that just tore my body up. So it really did. It helped me like learn patience and learn how to, you know, deal with things, you know, uh, with players and, and people as well. Did you realize you wanted to go into coaching uh, very quickly after you realized you weren't going to be able to continue to play after your injuries? I've always been obsessed with, with football. Like some people like, like it, you know, love it kind of, you know, like I'm a like, so I kind of relate to a lot of different people when it comes to football, because I was the guy who like, I would write out all the players when they got drafted. I'd import them in the game. I'd create football leagues within the community, you know, like fantasy, like all that. I mean, I love every single thing that comes with football, like every, every piece of it, every part of it. So for me, like I always knew that I wanted to, to be involved in football and coach. I mean, I've been creating plays every day since I was like five, six years old and, you know, like I remember when I played for Coach Malzahn um, at Tulsa, he was the OC. He would let me tell him what plays we needed to call and stuff certain times. So for me, I wanted to get into coaching. I didn't think that my career would end that, you know, I didn't think that it would that happen that way. You know, when like we just talked about, I went from being projected like a first or second round pick. I tore my ACL. Then I get to the starting lineup again and on a professional team. And then I tear my ACL again. I'm like, man, you know, if I could just stay healthy, I know I'll be good. But then when that didn't occur, when I first started coaching out in California, it was actually a guy who's on or, on or uncle lived in Greensburg. And uh, he gave me a shot as a coach. And it just changed my life. I really didn't even think about playing football anymore. Once I started coaching, it was just like, man, this is this is it. Can you remember a play that you drew up as a kid that you ended up using in a game? Uh, yeah, we scored at William and Mary on on the old school on the old school twenty eight sweep. So you know that was one of the deals where, you know, just out leverage, motion the guy down, boom, flip it outside, and and just let the fast guy run to the edge. And we used that play in a college game, and it and it you know worked. But ultimately, a lot of people have ran that play. Which job was that where you, you first got introduced to football where you said a friend of yours got you uh, hooked? Uh, so one of my friends, Sam, he played junior college with me. He's an agent now. Um, you know, I was really depressed and down um, dealing with the injury. So the first year that I got hurt, I kind of just rehabbed my knee, made a whole bunch of money and didn't do anything, you know, just was like kind of lost. Um, and he was like, man, you need to coach. You need to do something. So as I was rehabbing my knee, I went over to James Logan High School in Union City, California. Coach Zuber gave me an opportunity. He said, just go out there with the kids and do that stuff you guys were doing at Tulsa. You were the number one offense in the country. Like, just run that stuff and help them out. And, you know, ultimately, I had like three or four kids living with me. You know, those kids really came from rough environments, rough situations. You know, I thought my life was hard. Um, you know, those guys, I mean, I had a kid from Oakland living in the car with his dad and family living, you know, and I was like, man, I'll, I'll take you, I'll take you in. Like, you know, I just can't take your old family in, but I'll help you out. You know, so just different things like that. Those kids really, those kids really saved and changed my life. The football part of it's always been easy for me. I mean, I love that. I think about that nonstop all day, but the relationship piece was, was big with what really got me into coaching. Brennan, I asked you about your first impression of a bat and Arduzzi. What was it like playing for Todd Graham? Man, Coach Graham, we really related from the standpoint that I was like, when I was young, I was really, really tough, hard nosed, you know, and coach when he was a young, energetic coach at, at Tulsa, you know, he was all about toughness. So me and him really meshed well on, on when it came to that, you know, I, I just really felt like I could impose my will and be tougher and, and outwork people and stuff like that. And coach, that's back when he was sleeping in the office and you know, a young coach at Tulsa. So we really related from from the work ethic and toughness standpoint. 
Brennan, about your you know, with your story, you know, you talked about how you were younger, like you know, you would push yourself even when times maybe you should have slowed up, you know, when you were recovering on your knee injuries and you know, the lessons that you that you learned through them, how does that help you? How does that help you sometimes realize like, hey, I need to get through to this player who, you know, maybe because they've worked so hard to get where they are, their ego's in the way of receiving my coaching or we're taking in this outside advice. What kind of things have you learned that have helped you do that in the past and give you confidence about doing that in the future when you come across a player like that? Well, I always talk about there's, we use a, a format that I really came up with when I was a high school coach is listen, learn, apply the LLA format. So listen is like accepting the coaching. All right, you have to be receptive to the information. Learn is I'm gonna be a student of the game. I'm gonna take the information that I learned and and go gather more knowledge and then apply, you know, football is simple. It's about making and creating plays. And then, you know, there's four phases of learning. Everybody learns learns kind of differently. You know, there's the, the visual, there's the audio, and then there's the, the reading and writing, and then there's the act, actual kinesthetic, the, the doing. You know, so for me, it's like, you don't always have to be like, I had Kayla Newton, for example, he was just like me. We shared the same, he's one of the first players I've been around. He was a quarterback that worked out like I did, like to the point where I was like, all right, let me figure out some things where he doesn't hurt his body. So he would swim. Instead of doing another running workout, he would swim. He would watch film, he would write it down. Like, instead of just like killing your body nonstop, we found other things to do to circumvent his want to be great. Cause you know, his goal was to be better than his brother and he wanted to be the greatest. And his mind was just so driven on that. And you know, one of the first guys that I've been around that was like that, like that would really, you know he would be in the facility with me at midnight watching film. So, you know, that was one of the guys where I really had to like pull him back a little bit and he understood. I told him, you know, your body's all you got and you have to find other ways to get better, not just just pounding on yourself all the time. Do we have any final questions? Which coaching stop was that, uh, uh, Brennan? At Howard. Brendan, beyond, you know, Pitt, I mean, do, do you have aspirations of getting to power five coordinator status one day, head coach? Is that kind of on, on your mind, you know, going forward in your career? No doubt. I mean, anytime that you always have to have aspirations to be the best version of yourself. And, and I feel like that's the next phase in, in my maturation process. All right. Well, coach, really appreciate your time today. And have, hope you have a good rest of your day. And I'm sure we'll talk to you again. All right. Thank soon. you. Appreciate you. Thanks, Brennan. All right. Thank you you. Guys have a great day. Thanks, Brennan. Much appreciated. All right. Thank you all for that. And we'll have our player guest, Miles Austin. Got a good group of local media for you here today. So we'll go ahead and open up for questions. Miles, you were uh, recruited by one coach and, you know, he, he left almost right away. So how's it been, uh, you know, talking with Coach Marion? How's that relationship developing early on? Um, it's, going, it's going well. Um, coach Marion, he's, uh, he's coached in my state at um, uh, William & Mary and Howard before. So I always knew who he was, like, um, all throughout high school. So I know he's a good coach and I've heard nothing but good things about him. And uh, we're building a relationship just, just fine. Brandon, you had a lot of schools coming coming after you. I think they said there was there was twenty schools that that, that came out recruiting. What helped you pick Pitt over every, everyone else? Uh, Pittsburgh is different. It stands out. Uh, I've been on a visit here about three times before I committed, and uh, each visit uh, it was it was amazing. You know, um, from an academic standpoint, all the way to the facilities, and um, I just fell in love with it. I also like how it's not in the middle of nowhere. It's not just uh, University of Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh, you know. It's a city um, where we live, Bridge on Forbes. It's a lot going on right there. So it's not like I'm just trapped in a, just doing football in school. So it's, it's more to it. I'm guessing you can't wait for spring drills to start since you didn't have a, a fall season uh, in high school, right? Sure. Uh, I'm actually excited. Uh, we got like a week and a half left. So I'm um, just getting ready, prepping for that. What was that like, Miles, not, not playing football in the fall for the probably first time in your life? Yeah, it was definitely difficult. Um, me and my teammates really didn't like it, but we knew it was what it was. We couldn't really change it. Uh, we still worked out together a lot, though. And um, they put a 7-7 seven seven league together for 
uh, the city of Virginia Beach. We had teams from other cities and other states come and play. So we did seven on seven instead of real football. I'd much rather real football, but we had to work with what we had. Yeah, you were one of uh, four players from the state of Virginia to sign with Pitt in December. I mean, obviously, Coach Beatty was key in bringing you guys in, but with him gone and now Coach Marion in and you guys here, I mean, do you still think that Pitt can, you know, develop a strong pipeline to that state? Well, definitely. Um, I think the pipeline will be just as strong or even it can even grow stronger. You know, uh, the guys younger than us seeing us make an impact early at Pitt. Um, hopefully that'll inspire them to come and try to do the same thing. Miles, what's it been like uh, getting acclimated just in this wide receiver group who was kind of maybe taking you uh, under their wing? Uh, I've been talking with the older guys like uh, Trey Tipton and Jerry Wayne and Jordan Addison. Um, Jordan was in my same shoes this spot last year, so he kind of relates to me a lot. Um, they're, they're helping me out every uh, now and then whenever I ask them, they never hesitate to uh, help me out. So I'm really appreciative of them. I know it might ratchet up a bit more in spring ball and obviously in the fall, but what's uh, Coach Marion like as you know, like a just a coach, you know, on whether it's you know, in, in the in the room and, and giving advice and that kind of stuff. What, what's he like to kind of bounce bounce stuff off of? Uh, it's actually it's very it's very relatable because he's closer in age to us. Uh, he's not too close, but he's like closer. So um, the way he talks and like the things that like he's experienced, a lot of us have experienced as well. And uh, he, he's very informative, like, before we move on, he always makes sure everybody has it. So whenever he's writing stuff on the board or we're going over plays on film, he's, he's on it, everybody's on it, and we're all on the same page always. Miles, I'm the one who knows your coach, your high school coach, Coach Jones. Okay. Uh, watched him play basketball when I was a little girl. My dad was his coach. Did he, what did he tell you? Did he prepare you for Western PA and Pitt, even though he's a Virginia Tech guy? What did he tell you about coming up here? Um, he, he definitely told me, he definitely uh, put me in contact with some people that live up here. And uh, he told me about the city life, um, you know, comparing it to Virginia Beach and uh, gave me some do's and don'ts. And uh, especially we talked about the weather a lot because uh, I'm a big weather guy. I don't really like the cold too much, but obviously I'm gonna have to adjust to that being in Pittsburgh. So. Uh, that's gone pretty well so far. Miles, who are some of your idols at wide receiver that you've watched in your in your in your time growing up that have uh, inspired you to play the way that you play and work on the different things that you work on? Uh, Julio Jones, I would say, is my number one. Uh, I've been watching him since uh, he was at Alabama, and then when he came into the NFL in 2011, I've been watching his, his game and how he's been. Uh, rising every year. So um, that's definitely my, my number one receiver in the NFL. Brandon, I'm assuming you can give us a decent scouting report on the three other Virginia guys, Newton, Brown, and Hammond. Tell us a little bit about them. Um, I'll start with my teammate, uh, Naquan. Um, he's going to have another breakout season. They're playing uh, right now. They're having this season right now. Uh, he's definitely going to dominate. He's going to continue to do his thing. And then he'll be here in June. So you can expect a lot from him. Um, Good kid, hardworking. He's gonna he's gonna get the job done. He's gonna make an impact early, hopefully, just like the rest of us. And um, same thing with Malik. He's one of the best running backs, along with Rodney, that I've seen play football. You know, like uh, over three thousand yards rushing in his career at Lake Taylor. Uh, he's a good kid. He's actually my roommate now. Uh, we room together, so we've been talking a lot even before we came up here. And uh, same with Rodney. Uh, we spent together before I came up here, and uh, we chopped it up and uh, like. Watching him play, he's, he's electrifying, he's fast, he gets it done, he's all around athlete. Do you have any, uh, you know, kind of regrets or just, you know, having the senior season in Virginia right now? I mean, do you, do you miss being with your teammates or do you feel you made the right choice to enroll early at Pitt? I wouldn't say I have any regrets, but I do definitely miss them. I, uh, I talk to them every day, uh, text them before their games and, you know, tell them. You know, uh, just go out there and play. It doesn't matter who we're missing or who we, ha or who we have, you know, just get it done. We're still Ocean Lakes. Um, you know, they tell me how things are going in practice. And, uh, you know, we, we still communicate and they tell me, I'm giving them tips and uh, they tell me how it's going. Uh, you know, I try to like help coach them now. So what did go into your decision to enroll early? Um, I made that decision. I knew that I wanted to come in and make an impact uh, and Pitt's offense early. So I feel like giving myself a head start would be like the best way to go about it. So um, I made that decision around like April, right when I committed. Um, 
I made it with my uh, parents. We talked about it. My mom was definitely sad about me leaving early, but she knew it was uh, best for me to uh, get here and uh, start learning things early and get a head start. Anything final for Miles? Miles, uh, what's the, the playbook been like for you, and, and how's that part of the adjustment going? It's definitely different from high school. It's a step up, but I'm handling it well. Um, I'm taking it one play at a time. I'm going there. I'm getting them. I'm getting them done. I'm studying them every day. I'm reviewing them. I'm envisioning it in my head and I line up and what, what I have to do. And I'm asking a lot of questions too. Um, anything I'm unsure about, I always ask older guy or I ask the coach. You know, um, I'm just I'm learning it. I'm taking it in. Is there anything about uh, it that maybe surprised you or, or that was like really different than what you've done in the past? Uh, everything's just a lot faster. You know, even uh, even the classes are they're different than high school classes. You know, it's like sometimes it'd be like 50 other kids in a Zoom call. So professors don't always have time to go back and look over everybody. So it's got to kind of move at a higher pace. The same thing like in, uh, in the weight room and like the warm ups and all that stuff, everything's at a faster pace and everybody around you is bigger and faster. So you kind of just have to it just naturally elevate you being around those, being around those guys. Have you had, saying that, have you had a chance to walk around campus a lot or see the city or do anything yet? Or is everything pretty much enclosed? Um, I mean, I, I've had the opportunity to, but I normally just, I just stay in Bridges. I don't want to take too many chances with COVID. So I've only been like on Forbes Avenue if I'm going out to get something to eat or something. So I'm just staying inside for the most part. Else, all good. Miles, outstanding debut interview. Really thankful for your time today. And hope you have the rest of the day. Thank you, you too. Thanks, Miles. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, we'll wrap it up there for today's session. Thank you all very much for joining us. We'll be sending out the recording of this video shortly.